And now the exciting conclusion of the Rascals' history here on Pop Goes the 60s. Now almost overnight, the Rascals became an album-oriented band. They were no longer a singles band. And I think Felix may have been pushing for that, but boy, bands like to have hit singles and it really sucks when you don't have chart action. And um, if you notice the charts uh, that I've been showing along these singles that have been passing by, they've been starting, they've, they, starting in 67, they always charted higher in Canada. So Canada really placed them much higher on the charts, although their albums sold equally well in the States. So they were, were selling a lot of albums. And this happened to other bands as well, like the Association struggled with this. They kind of became an album band, but they weren't having hit singles. And that hurt them uh, because record labels wanted hit singles. Then that's how contracts were built. So in the case of the Rascals, that was a little bit different because their albums were selling in great quantities. They were really uh, selling out their venues quite a lot. And one example of their popularity was that they appeared on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Now this was in early 1970, and uh, the, the idea was all four of them in front of this car, that was the photo. But what the Rolling Stone did is they took Felix, uh, Felix Cavalieri and blew him up and had the three other guys small in the front. And this didn't go over too well with the band because it looked like, you know, Jim Morrison and the Doors. You know, one guy is the central point of the band, which really isn't how the, the band was built. So another problem during this time is the writing partnership of Felix and Eddie were, was completely falling apart. I mean, Eddie Brigatti was almost not writing at all. He wasn't getting along with Felix, so he wasn't bringing new songs to the band. He had threatened to quit the band. Now at this time, as you know, the Beatles went to India to study under the Maharishi, well, Felix Cavalieri had a Swami brought in to try to keep the band together. So Eddie was persuaded to stay, and they did the next album called Search and Nearness. So late, you know, summer of 69, uh, the Rascals were also one of the many bands that turned down Woodstock. So that was probably a strategic misstep in hindsight. As I was saying, the partnership of Felix and Eddie was, was really struggling. So on the Search and Nearness album, the only songs that Eddie sang on were written by Dino or Gene. He didn't sing on the lead on any of the Felix songs, although he did backing vocals, and he has no writing credits on this at all. So Glory Glory was their next single. It only hit number 58. This is one of a string of singles that sound kind of gospel-y. So the next single, Right On, which is from this album, uh, only got to number 119. So things are starting to spiral downward here. Eddie did quit after the album, and they have a space here where Eddie would have been, and his picture is superimposed in this window here. But what's strange is that Eddie is not listed as a band member on their album. Uh, he is, it, it says here, uh, just as vocals are by Eddie, Eddie Brigatti, but the band is listed in another section here. So that's, that's a band that's not getting along too well. And after this was released, guitarist Gene Cornish left. So with the band breaking up here, uh, the Rascals stole a pretty hot property. And they did something very strange. They left Atlantic. The end of their contract uh, came at this time in, uh, I guess, early 1971. And one of the reasons they left Atlantic was it really had to do with their management. I mentioned Bernstein earlier, these two guys, that they were very, they would honor their contracts. And normally when you get a big act and you're really selling a lot, you can kind of go back to the negotiating table and cut a bigger piece of the pie for yourself. And the Rascals, as time went on, knew that they could have done this, but their management wouldn't do it. So even though Atlantic was very good to the Rascals, at this point, Phyllis Cavalieri and Dino, who were the only original members left, decided to leave Atlantic and go to Columbia. Now, the next album they did is called Peaceful World. And this is a double album. I'm a little surprised they went with a double album, but uh, they were fairly hot property and they signed a real sweet deal with Columbia. Now this album was a bit of a departure uh, in sound, which kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, my album's kind of beat up here, but nice art, nice artistic cover here. It looks better if this isn't so beat up. But uh, this album is much more like a meditation album. 
the name Peaceful World really fits this record well. Now they did have a new guitar player brought on because Gene had left. So Buzzy Fighton, formerly of the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, joined. Now Fighton had been, uh, he had played with Butterfield at Woodstock and I think at the Newport, uh, no, the Atlantic Pop Festival. So he, he was a young guy, but he, he had some chops because if you're gonna play with Paul Butterfield, you better have some chops. So Annie Sutton was also added as a vocalist. So you have some, a little bit more of a female presence vocally on here in the background. And they had a couple other instrumentalists fill in on bass and, and, and other things as well. Of course, Dino is on drums. Love it, love it, I'm your brother now. Love it, love it. So you have some of these songs that are awash in flutes and harps, and it's like, wow, these guys are totally mellowed out here on this album. Uh, one, one song that uh, Buzzy Fighton wrote is a song called In and Out of Love. And this is a really great rock song. It reminds me of a little bit what Frampton would have done a little bit later. And then you have the title track, which is called Peaceful World. It's, it's a 21 minute, mostly instrumental. And you would think that, oh my God, 21 minutes? Yeah, they could have probably done it, done it in eight, but it's actually pretty good. It's actually listenable. It's not one of these album sides where everybody's got to take a song and try to out-solo everybody. It's just a mellow uh, jam song, actually. And I was a little surprised. When I, this is an album I always stayed away from. I'm like, ah, there's no way this can be good. Eddie's gone, Gene's gone. But it's actually worth a listen. So if you're able to pick it up, I would do so. I said, no. So all of this blissed out mellowness only got to number 122 on the album chart. And I have to believe that having a double album on the new label, um, that's gonna be more expensive. It maybe was a little bit uh, over ambitious, maybe a sl slightly self-indulgent to do a double disc, but they did. And I guess they paid the price for it. So the next album, they had one more album, it's called The Island of Real, and I don't even have that album. But the single from that album is called, the lead single anyway, is called Lucky Day. Now Lucky Day is actually akin to some other earlier hits. Beautiful melody, punchy song, but it missed the charts entirely. So they had three other singles pulled from the album, none of them charted, and the band broke up. So Felix, he did a series of solo albums in the 70s. Dino and Gene formed two bands together, Bulldog and then Photomaker. And then the Brigati brothers did an album together, I think it was 1976. The break of the, of the band was hard on all the members, and they worked with one another off and on, but they never reunited as a full band until much later. And we have uh, Stephen Van Zandt from the E Street Band was very instrumental in help getting them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. As everybody knows, there's a lot of politics involved in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Some people don't get in um, right away. They had to wait years and years. And this was the case with the Rascals. And Van Zandt carried some clout and people always have liked him. And he ended up uh, inducting them in the, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. And that particular induction got him the role on The Sopranos. It was so good. They're the best. I mean, you know, I mean, with all due respect, I, I, the, the Righteous Brothers, we love the Righteous Brothers. They're fantastic, you know what I mean? And everybody talked about the Righteous Brothers. But they didn't, they, Eddie, Eddie and Felix, though, you see, they, to the sound that black, you had to be Italian. So Van Zandt didn't stop there. They, not long after that, they said, well, let's take this on the road. Let's do something really special and do a retrospective of your career. 
take it out on the road and do a live show. Now this was called Once Upon a Dream and they got the band together even though people weren't getting along the best they said hey let's do this. Once Upon a Dream was a multimedia event with interviews on screen, the band playing live, photo montages, really high end. And uh, so they did a number of shows in New York which all sold out and it looked like this was going to be a thing uh, that the Rascals could do across the country and they did about 15 shows before it. It, they, they just couldn't do it anymore. It was financially it was very difficult to do. But it was very well done and Steven Van Zandt along with Maureen Van Zandt produced and directed everything. And it's, it's, it works for a bit but it's too bad that every band can't have a, a treatment like that. So uh, hats off to Van Zandt's vision and he really tried to have his band go out in style. And they did. The band still had, their music is still extremely stylish and sounds fresh today. So let's talk a little bit about what you can buy of the Rascals today. One of the albums that's still selling is this one. This is still a popular album. And Rhino Records re-released all the first four albums or five albums. And then they did essentially a best of album. There would be a, a volume two to the first greatest hits album. And this covers their last four albums. And really a fine selection of songs. So if you're looking to get some older vinyl, the early greatest hits one and then this Rhino Searching for Ecstasy would be an excellent part two for you. There's another retrospective I have here called A Selection of Classic Recordings. This is in retrospect. So this is a um, this is on Raven Records and this has got a lot of tracks. This has 20 songs on it. It's a single disc. It has a great um, great bio here, discography. Really nice. And then of course there's a couple really good CD compilations. There's a single disc compilation and a double disc that are easily available. So that is the story of the Rascals. Great discography. Any of these albums are worth getting and uh, they're, they're, they're not too hard to find either because they, they sold a lot of them. So if you're looking to get into some Rascals, uh, any entry point is a good one. One last reminder, with all my videos I always include links in the description if you're interested in purchasing any of this music or any of the reference material I use to do my research. And if you do purchase it through here, you're supporting the artist and you're also supporting my channel and I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.